the installation and basic use of the multi-tool for Illustrator. Now it's a plugin that can be used in Illustrator CS5, CS4 as well as CS3, also PC or Mac. Installation, basically you have to put the plugin in the program files, Adobe, Adobe Illustrator CS5 and the folder you want to put it in is the plugins folder. So I'm just going to select that and you will see the plugin is an AIP file. On the Mac you would have to put the file into the applications folder. Right, now just go to the actual tool itself. Now the tool appears in the toolbox. Once you've reinstarted Illustrator it will appear here. So I'm just going to if you double click you actually get the dialog appear over here, the grid tool. Now the tutorial, I'm just going to quickly go through various options in the grid tool. There are other options as well, uh, other tools. There's various drag tools, windmill tool, scale down tool, spiral tool, creating various paint effects, tile effects, background effects, those sort of things. But I'm going to concentrate on the grid tool. Right, the basic grid tool, I'm just going to quickly select a shape. Now the plugin can actually be used on many different types of designs. So as you got there, I'm going to select, it's actually an, inst an instance of a symbol, just created, that's text. Now you can't actually use text in this plugin, well you could with version 10, but uh, with uh, subsequent changes to the text engine in Illustrator, you can only use it via the symbol palette. So I've just created it as a symbol, that's text. Also you can use an image, import an image using the place command. Also you can use maybe slightly more complicated shapes like a, a frame or a, a shadow design, so multiple paths, or maybe graduation, and also paths with strokes. Now I'm just going to quickly select standard paths and select the tool, and then drag. So you just drag out to the size that you wish to, so you could stop here, and it would obviously all the paths would be overlapping. So you can extend it out, it's very interactive, so you can go backwards and forwards, change your mind. So you can just do that. So that's that. Also you can change the number of paths that actually involve, so it's five and five. So I'm just going to drag that out, so now there's only five in a row and five column. Twelve, twelve, so and drag that out like that. Now you can also rotate paths, so I'm just going to show you so you can see it a bit bit easier. I'm just going to extend the, make elliptical design here, so 45, and then drag that out, so you can actually, so you can see the actual path now is rotated. Now of course you could have done that outside as well, but uh, so one of the things. Now you can also randomise the rotation, so I'm just going to quickly put 360 there, random rotate, there's rotation there, and then drag the out thing, so you can see all the paths are now all randomly rotated. So some are like 45, some are 36, 90 degrees, whatever. Get rid of that. Rotation. You can also lock the design. So instead of actually sort of randomly, sort of as you move the, the path, you can actually just lock it to first. So it's actually just stuck at one particular position, but you can make a more controlled design that way. So I'll get rid of locked. You can also warp the designs if you wish. You can apply different warps. So you, know, you can actually apply it it's different. You can get create thousands of different shapes just by dragging that. A bit slow actually using the warp feature. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. Create. Now you can actually randomly create items. So sometimes a path is created, sometimes it's not. So you can actually create gaps in the, the actual grid. Now I'm just going to go and select another design at this point. So I'll just select that design there, and I'm just going to get rid of the crate. I'm just going to drag that out, so you can see that you can actually drag out slate, uh, like a frame design. Now if you want to colour, you can also got various colour options, so you can say two white, drag that out, so that you get a graduated effect, so you can see it just fades away to white, to black, just fades to black. Then you can do random colours. So now just so every one of the paths now is random colour. Random swatches will actually take 
the current swatches. So if you if I actually went to the swatches palette now, I've got reds, greens, whatever, also gradients, all those sort of things will appear in the designs. Also, there's a pattern option, which I'm just going to quickly show. There's other, other uh, fill color swatches as well, fill the color, color effects. So stroke color, I'm just going to quickly select one that's actually got a stroke. So yeah, you actually got stroke there, five point stroke. And if I got stroke color, random colors, drag that out. You can actually see the random colors now applied to the stroke instead. Also, you can apply the width. So I'm just going to select that and I can randomize the width. So I'm just going to create it slightly bigger so it makes it more obvious. So slightly bigger. Random colors there. I'm just going to go drag that out. Now you can see the stroke is different stroke sizes. 15 point, 0 point, 7 point. Of course, if you don't actually have a fill, so I'm actually just going to get rid of that fill to make it more obvious. So that's now just purely stroke. You can actually create different designs that way. Of course, these, these are just basic paths. So, I mean, if you decide, oh, I don't want all those designs, you can actually, of course, just use a good old object, clipping mask, make, get rid of that. You can just modify them in any way you want. Just their basic standard paths. There's nothing unusual about them. Right, just get rid of that. Now, there's other options. So stroke color, I'm going to get rid of, get rid of width. And I'm going to select an image now. This is a placed image. And there's a pattern feature. So I can actually create a pattern. It actually creates a duplicate, a mirrored duplicate. So you can actually see the duplicate of here. It's a mirror. There's many options for different uh, effects. So it sort of spreads different designs, different creates different sizes of different designs. Get rid of the pattern. Uh, just to quickly show you that the designs are actually duplicated. Again, like you say, you can just pull that out and you can get multiple of the paths. Now, of course, many of the options like fill color, stroke color will be ignored at this point because, of course, they don't have those, so you can't use them. Now, there are other options such as opacity. So I'm just going to now select multiple shapes again. And I will select the opacity, randomize. So now you actually get different opacities. So there you've got 41, 31. You can create sort of uh, more um, sort of smudged, artistic, painty sort of effects using that. Also, you can use the plugin. You can use it with the pressure setting, which can modify the effect. That's using an art pad and pen if you've got one of those. I'm using a mouse for this, so I can't really show the, uh, the effects of that. Also, you can apply these onto a new layer. So I'll just quickly show you that. I'm just going to drag out the tool. So that's now applied onto a new layer. So you can use that to create animation effects. So you can make... Also useful more with the trail feature, which I'm just going to quickly show. So you can actually do trail, and that creates... Now, every single time that you create a, a design, actually creates it, deletes it, creates it, deletes it constantly until you actually release the mouse. That's how it, but with the trial option set, it actually doesn't do the delete. So all those paths are actually created. Now, since I've created those with the layer option, if I go to the window, layers, you can actually see now all those designs are actually created across layers, which you can then obviously export to say Flash or using other animations. Right, so that's that. Right, that's the basic uh, set of tools. There's other options like checkerboard options, which I quickly show you as well. No checkerboard, get rid of the trail, with the plate layer, and I can drag that out. So you can actually use a gradient, and the checkerboard is not so obvious at that point because it a bit slightly too big, so I'm just going to resize the design, and so you can see a slight checkerboard. So each there's gaps now, whereas before it was a continuous. Delete that, and now I'll just quickly show you the selected text. I'll quickly do that as well, just to show you can use a symbol. So there you've got created 
isn't that? Anyway, this plugin is from graphicextras.com.